and it's going to be in the metaverse. You know, the metaverse is going to play a huge role in that. Going back to Ready Player One, I think of the museum that he would attend to gather all the information of the founder trying to discover these Easter eggs and clues. You know, uh, it's just exciting to where we're going and how it's going to help so many people out. Um, you know, because there's a concern too with the metaverse and it being akin or a predecessor to uh, a matrix like world, you know, so, so there's also some negative aspects when it comes to this, but a lot of good ones as well. Yes. I, I think overwhelmingly there's a lot of positives to the development of the metaverse. Um, and exactly what you just said, one is it's going to be helping artists maintain royalties forever on their artwork. And two, it's a store help, it's a storehouse of wealth. These wealthy people can buy these NFTs. And if it maintains its value, then they can sell that, they can pass it on to their children. It can go down the generations and that can be kept within the family. That NFT can be just passed through the family and serve as a storehouse of wealth. And like he was mentioning, artists are going to be able to sell things one time and they get to set their own royalty percentage. So if I buy something, if I buy one of their albums or one of their songs for $10, and then a year from now, I then sell it for $1,000. But that artist put a 10% royalty on that NFT. So when I sell it again, they're going to get 10% of not only that sale, but all future sales forever because it's written on the blockchain. And so every time a transaction happens with that NFT, 10% is going to go right back to that artist's wallet with no permission. Nobody has to give any green lights. It just happens because of the smart contracts that are connected to the NFTs. So it's going to give a lot of people a lot more freedom to express themselves creatively. So I'm excited about it. Right. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And you mentioned earlier Decentraland. Uh, were, were you able or have you uh, purchased any land in there and started to build something in that world or you, you, you still just watching? I'm, I'm just watching right now because you don't know which one's going to pop off, right? right? You don't know which one's going to be the one and you don't right. want to spend money in land. But anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so there's, um, there's a couple of these virtual worlds um, that are being called little metaverses, right? You have the central lands, you have crypto voxels um, and there's a few others, but Another one that I'm really excited about is called Somnium Space. And I think it's a whole step up from Decentraland and Crypto Voxels. You have a lot more interactivity, a lot more freedom to navigate in that world. And you can play in virtual reality in that game. Um, now, I will say that I am in talks um, with some professional athletes about doing a project inside of Crypto Voxels. Um, and we have chosen Crypto Voxels because of its accessibility. So if you're looking to build something, because what you can do in these virtual worlds is buy land. So you're going to have to spend a few thousand dollars in most cases to buy this virtual land. But you can buy it and then you can build on it. And people are thinking, OK, why would I do that? I just go play Minecraft or something where I don't have to pay for this land. The reason why you pay for this virtual land is because you can actually monetize it. What some people are doing is they'll build, say, a museum. So this virtual museum where people can walk in and they can tour around and see all this different art along the walls. Now this art, they're actually NFTs that are embedded right into the game. So someone can walk in to this virtual world, they can see this art and they say, oh, I like this one. They can click on it right in the game and it's going to open up a new tab and allow you to purchase that from um, an NFT marketplace like OpenSea. Mm -hmm. So imagine this, imagine you build yourself a museum in one of these virtual worlds and you have a lot of traffic right? You have an audience, you have people coming in there regularly. Artists can reach out to you and say, hey, I'll pay you, you know, $50 worth, worth of Ethereum each month if you're willing to showcase my art inside your museum, right? There's an opportunity to monetize that. Another opportunity for music artists is people are going to increasingly have virtual concerts. So you can buy a venue, you can build on it, you know, create your little stage and everything. And people can come to these virtual venues and pay with Ethereum or buy an NFT in, in order to get to this place. So you can accept um, concert ticket sales for yourself, or you can allow other artists to come and rent that space from you for their own concert. So there's a lots, of, lots of different use cases for monetizing this virtual land as to why we want to build in it. 
But anyways, um, yes, I am working on a project. Uh, we're still ironing out the details. So I personally have not purchased any land yet. 